Hey guys, I'm Chris Holt. Welcome back to another video. And today, I'm going to talk about my full review of the Car Trek series. So I know overall at the beginning I was a little skeptical of the Car Trek series, but as it went on, it got better and better each time. I would definitely recommend you guys go watch all of the videos if you haven't already. I'll link those in the description down below. So what is Car Trek for you guys that don't know what Car Trek is? Well, three guys who have YouTube channels set out to make a Top Gear style challenge video, buying three car, three supercars for less than the price of a new C8 Corvette. Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage, Ed Bullion of Vinwicky, and Freddie Hernandez of Tavares all each bought three cars for this challenge. Tavares bought an Aston Martin V12 Vantage S, Ed Bullion bought a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider, which was salvaged and flooded, which he fixed up for the challenge, and Tyler Hoovy bought a Ferrari 360 Spider, all for less than a C8 Corvette. The three then spent a week together with their cars, performing Top Gear style challenges to see who bought the better car. So one of the things that I pointed out in my first video was I didn't like how they received their challenges. It seemed very pushed. And as it went on, it kind of melded a little bit better, but, you know, it didn't didn't really seem to fit right. I think that's something they could work on in the new Car Trek series coming up, but I think overall you can look past it because there were so many better uh, things that they did in these videos over that, so you gotta look past it. And starting out, they didn't necessarily have the comedic justice that the two had versus what they do have now in the later episodes. So in the first episode of the series, the three guys go through and show everyone the different cars that they own. And it goes from Tavares, who owns a V12 Vantage S, to, uh, Hoovy's Garage, who owns the uh, Ferrari 360 Spider, and Ed Bully, who owns the Lamborghini Gallardo Spider. All three going in and talking about how they fit their budget of a base model C8 Corvette, or in Tavares' case, push that a little bit differently. Later in the episode, Ed Bullion's Lamborghini Gallardo Spider ends up breaking down or running out of gas and so then they decide to take the three to a mechanic shop to have all three cars checked out. So when the three get their quotes from the mechanic shop it's obvious to tell that Tyler Hoovy has a sorted out car, uh, Ed Bullion has the kind of sketchier car and Tavares has the poser's car with a lot of stuff um, a lot of stuff wrong with that car and he racks up the highest bill Ed Bullion has a lot of little things racking up the middlest bill, and the smallest goes to um, Tyler Hoovy with his 360. A big chunk of that happens to deal with his top not working, and as the series goes on, it kind of becomes a thing that his top not working and having the rip in it is a big deal. So the next episode starts off with the three guys driving from the shop that they were at to Tavares' shop, and they end up having to fix one of the parts broken on their cars. Now, both um, Ho Tyler Hoovy and Ed Bullion both don't really work on their cars back at home as they have other people to do it. So Tavares and the guy from Wrench Every Day uh, end up doing a lot of the work on the cars themselves. So Ed Bullion fixes his fuel filler problem that is addressed in the first episode, um, but he ends up doing a a rain shield for uh, his front trunk of his Lamborghini. Uh, Tavares pulls out a fuse for his V12 Vantage S to make the exhaust louder, and uh, and Hoovy uh, fixes his de hoop deifies his car. And then at the end of the episode, they find uh, Tyler Hoovy's lighting system and play with that. One of the things that happens in this episode that I think gets downplayed a lot is when Tyler Hoovy goes to pull it onto the lift, um, the E-gear slips and instead of going into reverse it stays in first and he kind of launches it into a pile of boxes and the moment is almost glanced over which I think in total it should have been a, a funny thing that they could have put in um, just showing that the, the good well sorted car uh, still has some issues. Episode 3 finds the presenters going to a drag strip, 
And it's funny seeing how all three of them fit in their cars, especially Ed Bullion and his Gallardo Spider, as they have to do the uh, quarter mile passes with the top up. So the thing I really liked about them going to the drag strip is they didn't just race the three cars and whoever was fastest wins. They took from the manufactured um, times that they got versus what they actually got. So it turned out to be pretty good. And as you could tell, the clutches were slipping in just about all their cars. But overall, it turned out that Tavares with the V12 Vantage S was actually the fastest down the strip and also the closest to the manufacturer's suggested quarter mile time. After this, they decided to go to a track to do some more shenanigans. So when they went to the track, all three guys were told to do a one take of their review of their cars and include some metaphors in there. For me, I didn't like how they said this as a challenge. I think it would have been one of those interesting things to have more of an unbiased opinion and maybe have the three guys test out each other's cars on the track. Um, it was one of those that I almost felt like should, didn't need to be there. Uh, but, you know, it didn't make for bad content. It just made, made for some extra content, in my opinion. Episode 3 brought the guys to the dinos to see how much power their cars have lost over the years. Now, I thought this was a really cool thing and definitely something that was, you know, unique for the three different cars coming from three different eras and just everyone's kind of opinion and being able to put that against the baseline test that the manufacturers have. The next challenge they had was something that I thought was really, really cool. The three guys took their cars to get appraised and see what a dealership would pay for the cars. I thought this was something that was really unique and totally not like Top Gear. One of those things that set them apart and made this a really great series that everyone needs to go watch. Later in the episode, the three guys parked their cars uh, front end to back end on a, a street next to a, kind of a wealthy area. It was really interesting hearing what people thought that the three guys did in order to own the cars. And Tyler Hoovey went out and kind of game show hosted, um, ta asking a bunch of questions to random strangers, uh, talking about what they thought that the owners did. I thought this was a really cool segment, one that totally set them apart and really made this a really great episode. The next episode they set up is to be almost the last episode it felt like to me. They really did a culmination of the whole trip and had some really great cinematic shots and really showed why Car Trek was such a good series. But for me, I felt like this was the last episode even though there was one more episode to go. So in the last episode, the guys get ready for the Concours de Elegance and they take their cars through the car wash, or at least Tyler Hoovey and Ed Bullion do. And I thought that was really funny as they saw the leaks in both the cars, especially on Tyler Hoovey's car. Uh, it was pretty cool going there and then having them get judged uh, was a really interesting thing and how in the end it turned out Tyler Hoovey ended up winning the whole thing. But it was kind of interesting because he sold that car and he has now an Aston Martin Rapide and then um, Ed Bullion still hasn't gotten his car sold yet. Maybe he's too much of a shrewd negotiator, I guess, on that end. People are scared to buy from him. And um, also, Tavares sold it for an Aston Martin DBS. Really interesting, and this was the last episode, the real culmination of the, ep of the series. Uh, really showed me how much improvement happened throughout this series, and they also mentioned that they want to do it before car week coming up in August. So cross our fingers that still happens because uh, I'm totally one that really want to watch the new episode of Car Trek. So that was my Car Trek review. I think it's really awesome and it's a great start. Next, ep or next season is going to be really great and I really look forward to watching it. The three guys are just building their momentum together and I can see it being the next top gear coming out here soon. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I really appreciate your guys' feedback, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe on my videos. So coming up, I should have a lot of installs on the channel, as I'm going to get the WRX engine back, and a couple of other th big things that I'm going to be doing here in the, next few in the near future. So stay tuned for next video, where I'll install these two mods right here 
and I look forward to seeing you guys next video. So we've got a 2010 Chevy Camaro and a 2002 Subaru WRX where I'm going to be doing a lot of installs over the next coming months and I post Monday, Wednesday, Friday so make sure if you guys are at all interested about seeing new content on those cars and just me and my life in general make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.